Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining BlueScript's webinar. My name is Clarence and I'm the comm specialist from BlueScript, one of the world's leading producer of coated and pre-painted steel. With us today are Rocky and Soling, who are our technical marketing engineers that champion our product innovations with their extensive knowledge on steel. Can I invite them to join me on screen? Hi. 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 Morning, Hi Rocky, hi Soling. Okay, guys, we have a truly interesting topic for you today. Mm -hmm. We will be discussing on whether a higher price tag will lead to better quality and deduce the important implications that affect the quality against the actual value of the product. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any queries throughout the presentation, remember to drop them at BlueScope's online virtual stand where we will have our experts to address your queries at real time. So without further ado, I'll pass the stage over to our speakers, Rocky and Sukling. Enjoy. Thanks. Thanks, Terence, for the wonderful, wonderful introduction. So, uh, so Ling, well, uh, today we'll be talking about does a higher price tag mean better quality? Of course, uh, with our industry, we are uh, definitely talking about building material, right? And uh, today, I believe uh, we'll bring our knowledge and background about, you know, what we did or have been doing uh, as, you know, the technical uh, marketing engineers for BlueScope. Uh, where, you know, I believe you did a lot of product development, uh, product evaluation, and, uh, you know, me with all the site inspections that we have done. So to, to bring on to this topic and discuss about it. All right. So uh, to start, let me just ask you this question, Soling. Um, for, let's think about it from your point of view. I believe, you know, some of our audience would have uh, such a thought as well. Like if you want to renovate your house, right, uh, make it much more beautiful or expand it from, you know, a double story to a triple story or even a bungalow. Uh, would you prioritize, you know, um, choosing a material based on just low price tag or, you know, would you just rely on higher price tag uh, building material as an indicator? Oh, well, uh, personally, I'll be looking towards a higher price tag in general because I'm not the expert uh, to install uh, those uh, building material by myself whereby I need to engage um, the expert to do it for me. So um, my uh, expectation towards the building material basically, uh, it will give me a peace of mind. And therefore, I will be looking towards the higher price tag for building materials in general as it will lead to a uh, better product quality in common way. So how about you, Rocky? Which one will you uh, prioritize? Well, uh, I do believe um, that higher price tag would naturally lead to, you know, an excellent or good quality product. Um, but I think there is, uh, I mean, when we talk about quality product, right, uh, there is mm. always a definition to it. So how do you, I mean, for, for me, uh, I would definitely choose a high price tag, but I, I'm more interested to know how do you define a quality product based on your point of view? Yep. So uh, basically, the way I uh, justify whether uh, the materials or the product uh, qualities by looking mm -hmm. at uh, its lifespan. So mm -hmm. uh, typically for building materials, I will be looking at uh, five at least five to ten years, it will give me a mm -hmm. peace of mind because in the mm -hmm. next uh, five to ten years, I have my uh, personal target whereby I may upgrade for my uh, current, for example, like a uh, double story terrace house to a uh, mm -hmm. bungalow in the future. So, uh, my wow. justification towards X will be basically uh, looking at at least five to ten years. Wow, what a short, I think so. what a short span target and what a big uh, ambition. Well, oh, we're, we're sure to visit your bungalow soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, in my case, uh, I, my definition of, uh, you know, quality product would be slightly different, I would say. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, just to decipher what you just mentioned is that uh, your definition of quality product is that, you know, you would uh, hope for it to uh, last for at least 10 years, uh, you know, without any issue mm. and giving you a peace of mind. Uh, for me, however, I'm looking at, you know, a multi-generational house. Maybe I'm more sentimentalist where I would hope for the same house, uh, it to be uh, repurposed and, you know, 
re renovated without any of the major architecture stuff uh, being changed um, for the next maybe 10 or uh, I mean 10, 20 or 30 years. And yeah, I, I, I would ideally hope that, you know, uh, all the external, uh, say the, the wall, the roof, not be uh, refurbished, not be uh, repainted and make sure it be uh, staying nice for quite a long time. Yeah. Well, yeah, since on, on that topic, right, uh, I think it's a good segue for us to go into our first uh, aspects of how do we justify a price tag, right? So it has to do a lot with color. So um, I often, uh, I mean, I, I actually receive some feedback like uh, from mm -hmm. uh, different customers and, and sometimes they will say, hey, uh, the, the color is lighter. Why isn't it cheaper, right? Uh, so perhaps you can enlighten us on, on this issue because <laughs> it's quite funny. Uh, I mean, intuitively, yeah. if let's say people do not understand, you know, how color works, mm -hmm. then they will just say, oh, lighter colors, supposedly you use less uh, stuff, right? That means uh, it should be mm -hmm. cheaper. But what is it really? Yeah, because uh, the color basically is made up from the paint. And then mm -hmm. most often uh, people, they do not know that what are the constituents inside the paint. So mm -hmm. basically inside the paint, it comprises of uh, the resin and also the pigments. And we have mm -hmm. so many wide range of the pigment and also the resin in the market. So yeah. uh, the quality one will definitely will be affecting the price tag in general. And mm. the combination of the pigments and also the resin must be both in good qualities. Yeah. For example, yeah. if you are use, mix, try to mix uh, the quality resin with the uh, poor pigments, it won't be able to, um, I would say, uh, maintain the color uh, in terms of the long color durability performance. So mm -hmm. the mixture must be the both uh, good quality uh, materials for pigments and also the resin in order to have the better uh, color durability uh, performance yeah i'm so, sure we'll share we'll share this uh in, in the later slide so let's use that to uh, to illustrate further about that right so uh i understand that you know like this is what you mentioned right is that <clears throat> for paint itself it's made of two major components so the the major mm -hmm. part is that that determines the color is uh, so-called pigment and what you can see here is just examples of different pigments. Mm. Uh, it is made of different uh, like material. And uh, of course, when it is binded together as a you know, paint, mm. uh, so this is how it looks like. So uh, Sunny, maybe you can uh, you know, elaborate further on what we are seeing here. Okay. So from the screen itself, it's basically, I would say, it's a very bit of pictorial form of the microscopic mm -hmm. uh, view of the, of the paint layer. So the circle is actually representing the different uh, type of the color pigments. We have big mm -hmm. and we have small, which is representing different type of the pigment used. And the resin is actually, uh, uh, the function of resin is actually to, uh, to bond or to hold the pigments together so that mm -hmm. um, the color will not fade in the short run. It will be able to maintain its performance in the long run. So raising also play a very important role over here. And mm. in terms of without, uh, for, sorry. Yeah. I think without uh, resin, uh the, the pigment will become powder on the surface, right? It just blows yes. away. <laughs> mm. Because pigments is actually basically is a powder pow, powder form. Raising yeah. is actually a liquid form. So we need to mix this together and blend it well so that um, we have very even colors uh, across the paint. And that's the reason why uh Normally, before you do a painting activity, we need to stir the paint first. That's the reason uh, behind uh. Mm. Mm. To, to disperse the pigment uh, so that it is even. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, so on that note, I think uh, the diagram here is just to help you understand uh, for our audience out there, uh, to help mm. you understand uh, you know, how is, you know, a paint made out of, of course, this is a, a, a much more simplified version. Uh, and of course, if let's say you really want to have a realistic microscopic view, I'm sure, you know, there are experts out there who can do that. So the illustration here is to show that, you know, uh, in one color, it can be made out of many different pigments, right? Which is the gist of what affects the price tag, right? I mean, the color. And uh, of course, uh, 
talking about pigments, there are many, many types of pigments out there. Um, I, I believe on our skin also, we have our own uh, color pigment. Different people have different mm -hmm. color pigment, right? And um, of course, for it to be used as a, you know, a building material, right? So it needs to be, of course, uh, durable, right? So perhaps so you can share with us um, what we are seeing here, bright pigments, right? What What is it and and how is it uh, used or not being used in the in the building industry? So uh, the bright movement, as you can see over the screen here, like, basically uh, mm -hmm. the colors itself is more attracting in the way that very uh, colorful color is, um, it seems like very uh, fresh kind of the color shape itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, these bright pigments, uh, I would say, uh, most often to be produced uh, from the uh, uh, organic pigments. Yeah, when mm -hmm. talking about the type of the pigments, generally we have two types, uh, organic and mm -hmm. also the inorganic pigments. Yeah. So uh, yeah. for organic pigments, basically, uh, uh, I would say it's a synthesized uh, type, the, uh, the pigments, whereby in terms mm -hmm. of the color performance, it will be slightly weaker compared to inorganic uh, pigments whereby inorganic pigments it only requires the uh, the uh, the sourcing uh, from the from the nature itself it doesn't require a lot of the uh, the synthesis process so in terms of the uh, color performance i would say uh, organic pigment would be slightly uh, weaker and therefore mm -hmm. uh, you will be uh, commonly see all these kind of the bright pigments uh, under the i would say uh, in the lower tiers of the uh, material selections because uh, I think the manufacturer also knows about uh, the performance whereby most often they will introduce those uh, bright pigments under the lower tiers uh, product range or lower tier segments yeah. whereby so, uh, in the market um, mm. we will be uh, seeing this bright uh, colors at the lower price tag in general. Mm. So what you're saying is that um, despite it being uh, very attractive and also very mm. colorful uh, I mean, bright pigments are generally made out of uh, organic pigment, which later on for our audience, uh, you know, uh, we will actually illustrate further just to give you an idea. Um, but in general, what you're saying is that bright pigments tends to fade faster, right? Um, so less durable, put it that way. And hence, it, uh, because of that, you know, it, uh, it is less valuable. So people ought to pay lower price or you know uh it, it ought to being uh cost at the i'm uh, being priced at the lower range uh, compared to it being priced at higher range because of this issue right so mm. well uh just now uh so then you you point out a really really uh, important uh comparison of organic and inorganic payment so for our audience uh who's listening in uh let me just uh illustrate a bit about organic or in inorganic pigment so so Ling mentioned that you know organic pigment is something that uh, needs to be synthesized right so these are just some examples of pigments that are organic pigment need not necessarily be used in in uh, this industry but just for your understanding okay so alizarin is actually a type of organic pigment right that uh, is derived from the roots of medus which is a type of plant you know uh, famous uh, or commonly seen uh, uh, in some part of uh, the, the world or Europe, right? And uh, they actually derive this uh, from their root and then just refine it further and become powder form. And uh, a bit of science here, okay? Why we call them organic pigment is because um, of the, uh, the structure of it. So if let's say the, the uh, pigment itself contains a so-called carbon uh, chain or so called carbon compound then uh, they call them organic pigment right in contrast right to the uh, organic pigment right there is inorganic pigment again uh, with with uh, the exception of, of uh, this kind of inorganic pigment just now we, we are referring to all those bright bright pigments right uh, inorganic pigment commonly are uh, not so bright one but uh, this example I'm showing you is actually lead chromic, which is a specific type of organic inorganic pigment, right? That is toxic, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning, if you use it in your so-called uh, uh, building, right, 
then it will actually create uh, quite quite a uh, uh, you know toxic environment. So uh, perhaps so Ling, uh, just just uh, with your you know experience in uh, product development and also mm-hmm. sometimes uh, matching to different colors, right? Um, how would you approach if let's say people like like our audience say after listening mm-hmm. to this they say oh I want to build a say warehouse um, that looks uh, that has my uh, corporate color that is yellow, for example, right? Uh, the exact yellow that you are showing on the screen, how would you approach it? Yep. Uh, first of all, uh, I will be uh, seeking the pen supplier uh, uh, advice, whether mm-hmm. uh, in order to achieve the certain uh, color shape, for example, like mm-hmm. the, the yellow color shape that we can see all, over the screen, because uh, uh, I think uh, 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 experience it towards the color machine process. And I know that uh, most often for those uh, bright pigments, like uh, to achieve the certain like the bright yellow color here, it tends to use uh, those uh, toxic pigments in order to achieve the color shape. So mm. I think importantly, we need to always uh, check with the reputable uh, suppliers and get the confirmation from them uh, whether is there any use of these uh, toxic pigments. It mm. is. Uh, we do not encourage any use of this uh, toxic uh, pigments for any mm. uh, color matching uh, process because it will be harmful towards the user uh, or the purchaser who are, whoever who used these materials in the future. So mm. remember to say no always to any uh, toxic uh, pigments because mm. uh, so, I, I believe the audience also couldn't really uh, uh, justify or, or comment whether yeah. uh, the color that is consists of this uh, toxic pigments or not by looking at the fresh produce uh, panel using our naked eyes. So I would say importantly, always uh, consult your suppliers and get yeah. them to supply you the uh, the SDX uh, certificates or etc. So I think uh, the confirmation on it. Yeah. I think in terms of uh, color, right? Uh, what what you are saying is that. It is very hard for us to look at the panel, whatever samples mm-hmm. that uh, they receive, uh, and and see whether there's any toxicity for this color, right? And um, what we approach, uh, our approach is that you know we would we have made a commitment not to uh, put any of to- this toxicity uh, on on you know on the paint, right? Mm-hmm. And and of course this is it might not be regulated, right? Uh, because again. For one product brand, you know, it can sometimes this kind of non-standard color, it can be uh, produced on on a non-standard basis, right? As what uh, Soling you just mentioned. Um, so I think while doing all this, uh, you know, process of you know seeking for you know new colors for your building, uh, perhaps you know just ask about. Uh, whether it contains all this toxicity and make sure that, that they declare right and mm-hmm. and give you a, a reassurance that there's no such thing and and i think uh you know that would actually make uh you know your building safer all right so of course uh we just touch about bright payments that can be uh organic or inorganic payment but most likely it's going to be organic payment right but how about mm-hmm. um unsaturated colors Colors that are not so vibrant, like for example, bright red or bright blue, bright yellow, um, they're more down to earth tone, right? Literally, I'm saying earth tone. Um, so, in this case, right, is it exempted from uh, you know, a product that does not have organic pigment? Because we know that organic pigment is already you know not not naturally not performing that well. I would say uh, this is uh, another good question to be asked because uh, unsaturated colors, it can be produced using uh, both organic or inorganic pigments. And mm-hmm. we can't really uh, confirm uh, uh, on the color shape itself uh, whether what type of the pigments they are using. So mm-hmm. I would say uh, the best way is you try to talk to your uh, suppliers I'm, uh, on your expectations. And since you are know that the inorganic pigments will be able to last long, try to request on it. Try to put your requirement up front. Talk to your suppliers. 
in order to get uh, the materials that you expect you what you expect mm -hmm. yeah. yeah well i i think um uh yeah just by looking at just the pigment itself uh you know uh, you, I mean, mm. just by looking at the color, you would not know uh, whether right. it is inorganic or organic pigment, even for those uh, down to earth tone color, right, or, mm. or unsaturated color, so to say. Um, just to show some examples, inorganic pigment, right? I mean, again, uh, it is meant to show, you know, different types of pigment that uh appears the same in, in the same color, right? So for example, white color, uh, mm. zinc oxide can be a white pigment, right? So uh, it's actually a type of inorganic pigment, right? And there's also another type of uh, inorganic pigment that appears to be white, which also is commonly used, which is titanium uh, mm. dioxide, right? Both appears white, but uh, again, just now we were just comparing between organic and inorganic, right? Uh, we know uh, naturally uh, finished product that is with uh, most organic pigment would uh, be priced lower, right? Compared to those that are, uh, you know, using inorganic pigment, right? That appears the same. And within inorganic pigment also, uh, there would be a price range, right? Some white pigment can cause uh, significantly lower than the others simply because of uh, the source and also the performance right so um of course throughout the years you know the the pain producers you know uh, our r d has done their research to know that which are the most viable solutions to be used as a final product right so i think uh, just now so then you touch on a really really important thing which is r d right so i think uh, you need to rely on you know your R and D to to actually do all this right and 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 make sure that they give you the assurance that you know after all that research that is reliable, mm. uh, you come up with uh, the conclusion, yeah. So uh, enough with uh, pigment, right? So how about the more liquidy stuff, the resin, right? Mm. So um, in the market there are actually quite a lot of resins. Again, uh, these are also quite abstract because it all appears transparent if let's say you look at the raw material itself and then you mix it with paint uh, the pigment then it becomes the same color right so uh, so think maybe you can share a bit about what we are seeing i mean we have a few options right so yeah yeah so uh regarding the resins like what you mm -hmm. can see over the screen over here basically there are various mm -hmm. type of the resin in the market this is available in the market so mm -hmm. i would say uh generally for the external uh, cladding kind of the applications polyester and also the PUDF will be the, uh, the common uh, resin will be used. And mm. uh, there are other types of the resin like epoxy, polyurethane, and also a plastic soil as well. Yeah. Uh, but uh, different types of the resin have the different, uh, it, uh, they will be having its uh, pros and cons uh, definitely. So uh, for example, like uh, epoxy, I would say it's a very, mm. it's a very good uh, type of the resins. However, it is not recommended to be used uh, under the weathering conditions. Uh, you mean under the sun? Yeah, correct. Mm. But for polyurethane, uh, I would say it is a very good uh, type of the resin as well. But in terms of the color selection, it will be quite limited. And most often, mm. these uh, polyurethanes will be used um, to post painting for the uh, mouth steel or any uh, structural uh, materials. Mm. Will, I would say a uh, different type of the uh, the application in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what essentially you are saying is that um, uh, out of so many pigments, the one commonly used are polyester-based uh, uh, resin and also PDF-based uh, uh, resin. Mm -hmm. And um, the others, it might not be suitable to be used because of our natural uh, weather, which is sunny and hot and, uh, you know, with all this UV right around. So I think you know, that's why it's, uh, you know, uh, trying to say, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, on that point, um, of course, we understand that, you know, in the market, there is always a common belief, you know, that PDF, they call it paint, uh, I mean, mm. as a final product with PDF resin. PDF paint uh, generally can perform uh, better. So uh, is it true? Um, I believe uh, you prepared this 
picture oh, to yeah. elab elaborate? Yeah. Uh, I would say uh, there are also a wide range of PVDF uh, 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 pain formulation that's available in mm -hmm. the market. And from mm -hmm. uh, my experience, it told me that at the certain uh, uh, the raising and also the accurate ratio will be uh, able to uh, perform. So mm. the sample that you can see over here is the second sample from the lab. That is mm. the optimized uh, versions. So uh, from our study, we found out mm -hmm. that at this optimized uh, version, it will only able to uh, uh, perform uh, in terms of the color durability. durability. For, mm -hmm. uh, for the rest of the, uh, the different type of the PVDF formulations, they can, uh, it is also uh, known as a PVDF uh, pin. But however, mm -hmm. in terms of the color performance, it will be another way around. So I would yeah. say, uh, importantly, try to uh, consult and try to seek uh, your supplier to show you the, uh, the past uh, proven record uh, mm -hmm. to, to show you that, um, or to build up the confidence level uh, in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, to, so to, I, to, to the benefit of our audience, um, I believe what you're trying to say is that um, not all PDF paint uh, will perform the same, um, even the one with the right ratio, right? Because I think uh, yeah. in the end, uh, just now you mentioned, is that you have to have a good pairing of the pigment mm -hmm. and the resin. So it doesn't just have one to work well. So it has to have both. And and it requires a lot of uh, R&D uh, mm -hmm. and also rigorous uh, testing um, in, in the re more realistic uh, way of testing again um, to come to a conclusion that this paint can last. And uh, this relies a lot heavily on the uh, you know, background of you know, the, the, the experience of the company. Right. So uh, yeah. on that note, right, uh, on touching on research and, and, you know, the background and all that. Uh, so then I would like to uh, pose a challenge to you because I think uh, most people would, I mean, uh, for our audience, perhaps, you know, some of you might not be very familiar okay. when choosing colors. Um, mm. uh, I mean, I, I really don't know. So uh, when you choose a color, right, uh, mm -hmm. for example, this is the challenge. Okay. I give you two blues. Right, blue one and blue two. I mean, it appears the same, right? But how do you know uh, which one uh, would last longer? If let's say I ask you this opinion, right? Or would you be able to tell? Well, Rocky, this is really a, a very challenging uh, question to me. I believe uh, it will be <laughs> same uh, challenging question to all the audience here. Uh, yeah. So I can't really uh, comment or uh, which uh, color, uh, for example, like blue one or blue two will be able to perform in the long run. Because mm -hmm. the performance, uh, the color performance, we need to undergo a lot of uh, uh, testing or the exposure uh, test in order to mm -hmm. check the, uh, the color performance itself. So mm -hmm. I can't really uh, comment uh, by looking at the, uh, the fresh produce panel using my naked eyes to mm -hmm. uh, to justify whether which one will ever to last long. Mm. Well, well, so so audience, you can see, you know, even our most experts can't even tell blue one or blue two can last long. Well, the only thing or uh, the, the most intuitive thing you can, they can do is ask about, you know, the, the research background, you know, whether this yeah. has been signed off and and whether they have done their extensive studies, right? So if not, yeah. right, then you will see something like this, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, Soling, I'm, I'm sure we, yeah. we have seen this uh, study and, and it was actually not an intended study. So perhaps you can share a bit of background mm -hmm. about uh, this building oh, yeah. and what we saw, what we are seeing. Mm. So this, uh, I would say this uh, study is come in whenever uh, we receive uh, some uh, feedback from the market. Um, they are mm -hmm. saying that, oh, uh, uh, your material is actually showing the, the color change within five years time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we went over to do the inspection and then uh, we found, found out that actually this is a mix of materials whereby mm -hmm. uh, they are mixing the other materials um, onto the same buildings. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. like the samples uh, or, or like the panels that you are seeing on the screen here on the sandwich mm -hmm. screen all over the centers, especially the other materials. Initially, it is the same color shape. 
like yeah. what you can see over the screen here, those lapping area, mm -hmm. they are not uh, really uh, exposed to, to the sunlight, whereby mm -hmm. uh, we, it still managed to keep the original color. So from here, you yeah. can, from the bottle on the left and on the right, from the uh, lapping area, you are able to see that the initial color, it seems like very close to each other. However, mm -hmm. for those uh, uh, exposed area, which uh, I would say the- Exposed the, under the, the sun, pain, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. the pink area. Mm -hmm. it, do, it doesn't uh, really uh, have the similar uh, color performance within five mm -hmm. years time. Uh, yeah. That's the reason why uh, uh, I also uh, mentioned just now, uh, we can't really uh, comment whether the colors will be able to perform uh, by looking at the fresh produce uh, panel using our naked eyes. It requires mm -hmm. the testing or exposure test uh, to for us to know that how good the color performance is. Yeah, well, uh, if let's say uh, I put a challenge to you, right? Mm -hmm. Both initially that looks the same, right? Uh, looks blue and, uh, and I say, uh, I dare to say the one on the right tend to be cheaper. The one on mm -hmm. the left should be more expensive. I mean, based on what mm -hmm. we just discussed, uh, intuitively, the one on the right should be cheaper, right? Uh, otherwise, why would people, you know, choose it over the one on the yep. left? But um, of course, um, I'm sure audience also has this dilemma, our audience, um, mm. that there's always a constant balance between, you know, price tag and also how it performs. So, of course, uh, in the market, you know, there are all sorts of assurance that uh, a manufacturer can give you, right? Uh, manufacturer mm -hmm. A, manufacturer B give you two different things and then you just compare with the price and all that. Um, mm -hmm. How, okay, would you choose, uh, I mean, for, for me, I know personally both, you know, the one on the left, even on the right, I wouldn't choose at all because my expectation, again, if let's say, you know, I was to build a multi-generation house is that, I at least want it to, you know, not have any signs of change or even colors, right, uh, for at least 10, 20 years. So, so even the one on the left seems a bit off for me, but how about you? Mm. Personally, I, I will, I, the, the one on the left is still uh, within my acceptable range, I would say, because mm -hmm. it will still carry the, uh, the blue color shade itself. Mm -hmm. But the, the panel on the right, I can't really uh, accept it uh, because the colors does change really a lot. And this yeah, is only uh, within five years time. <laughs> yeah. So so this is the dilemma, right? Uh, mm. So if you um, think, you know, I mean, our audience, if you think that, uh, you know, you can accept the one on the right, uh, you know, with the, a low price tag, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. But uh, most often people are deceived to believe that um it can last as long as the one on the left and and end up they are heartbroken because they had to spend more money on uh, you know painting over those are yeah. the costs that are not accounted for when you are buying uh, at the mm -hmm. early on and of course to further elaborate that let me just share another uh case that we have encountered wow. before right so uh so you're seeing actually a big uh, picture mm -hmm. right uh, of, of uh, a commercial busy shop lots up. and uh, there are actually two shades of uh, roof over here one in beige and one in green and um mm -hmm. to uh, i mean maybe you're surprised maybe i'm not uh you know audience but the one in the center that appears beige it was originally green right and eight years ago and after eight years um the green totally disappear and then you get this uh, beige color and uh Again, it was only after eight years. And for me, I really cannot accept it. Um, I'm not sure our audience, how, how would you feel? Would you resonate with my feeling or would you feel otherwise? But uh, I think the message here is that, you know, uh, there ought to be a different price tag. And, and of course, often the dilemma that you have to choose, but well, without uh, all the information that you can get, like what Soling you mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. conscious decision right uh, uh reputable suppliers uh, information so you need to have all this information and take all the warnings before you decide what to buy because yep. once you put it on it's very hard for you to uh, replace it you know uh, in the short run and i'm i'm sure you know uh, 
the owners who, who, by the stroke of luck who chose you know the site compared to the center uh will feel really really lucky yeah yeah okay. or the other uh, yeah. building over the site is actually uh, installed or completed around the same year with the central buildings yeah yeah uh, in fact uh, this is a common practice right in in malaysia i'm not sure whether any part of the world but i'm sure our audience have experienced this also but uh, let me just explain so um in a project normally they'll you know break up the contract and those uh you know uh, uh, break up the contract and then uh you know let different contractors to uh, you know build the the, the uh, whole development and most often uh you know different contractors that would opt for different uh you know material simply because of you know how much they want to earn right so again it's a dilemma by contractors right yeah a contractor one and contractor two. So contractor one might want to earn more compared to contractor two. So they would choose, uh, you know, alternatives and whatnot. So, um, of course, if let's say the alternatives are ten on paper to justify, you know, uh, whatever specs that you know architects gave, then uh, there's no uh, good reason to uh, reject, right? But most often those things on the paper are just. It, it might be unreliable, right? Uh, so that's why I think your emphasis is uh, right on, is that it is spot on, is that the uh, emphasis on reputable, uh, reputable supplier, it is very, very important because, uh, yeah. I mean, how do you even define it, right? Reputable, right? So, so you, I mean, in, individually, you need to ask the questions, right? What, uh, kind of uh, testing have you done and it's a realistic test right and later on we'll also dive in deeper on that anyway so yeah same building and of course i'm sure we have seen also uh, some successful uh stories and uh, this is one of them so then maybe you can elaborate further on this one. Oh uh, yeah so uh basically for this project uh, is a uh, uh, one of the projects in uh sama whereby mm -hmm. the lower roof which is highlighted in yellow uh, over here it's basically in, mm -hmm. installed in the years uh, 1997 and mm -hmm. the upper roof is actually installed uh, 10 years apart yeah and when we went back to do uh, some uh, study on it and we fly off the drones and uh, take some for photo shootings over there and then basically it's in the year 2016 which mm -hmm. is approximately a nine years old for the upper roof and 19 years for lower roof and it's just mm -hmm. uh surprising me because I can't really uh, see a very significant color difference between the upper roof and also the lower roof, even though they are installed uh, 10, years 10 years apart. apart. Yeah. This is yeah. really, really uh, surprising me. I believe mm -hmm. uh, the builder owner uh, does do the uh, tarot checking with the uh, suppliers mm -hmm. on their, maybe they uh, give their expectation uh, of from towards, mm -hmm. towards the reputable uh, suppliers on it. And hence, they are getting uh, this, uh, I would say, it's quite an uh, amazing kind of the result. And also, well, the it could be that. More color. Yeah. yeah, it could be that or it could be, uh, uh, you know, luck, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, they have more money to spend and then this also mm -hmm. happened to buy a good product. I mean, it, it can happen, right? You could luck. Yeah. Right? So uh, on, on a closer look, this is how it looks like uh, compared to an original color. So the color name itself is called Aquamarine. Uh, mm -hmm. And we, I mean, if you... Compared closely, of course, you can uh, make pick on, on the picture. You know, there are some dust and all I mean, the, it's building, right? It happens. So, but uh, the essence here is that, you know, again, come back to color, right? The color itself does not change a lot after, what, nine and uh, 19 years apart, right? From uh, where the photo was taken. So that gives you, you know, uh, uh, I, I would say for me, this is a money worth, of, uh, worth me buying for this product. And of course, uh, we have seen also all sorts of other uh, studies. So this one is um, actually taken in South Africa, uh, where, uh, again, the photo was taken, you know, in 2009 and 2020 and 10 years apart. So this is how it looks like. Of course, we have a closer, a close up look comparing to the original color. So yeah. if you see on the left on, you know, the wall cladding, uh, this is how the color appears. Uh, original color compared to uh, 
the one that is exposed for 10 years, meaning exposed yeah. under those severe conditions of like sunlight, mm. uh, rain, and you know, what have you over there. Yeah, if I'm the building so, owner, I'll be yeah. very happy uh, on this uh, color performance. After 10 years, it's very limited uh, color uh, mm -hmm. difference comparing to the or yeah. comparing to its originals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so for our audience, so, so you need to have a you know a conscious uh, a decision making uh, with all mm -hmm. this uh, thing in place when you are considering the price tag because the price tag alone uh, does not tell you a lot uh, uh, by itself because again we we open uh, when when we started we know that you know uh, intuitively a higher price tag would naturally mean uh, better quality but mm -hmm. again uh, these are the questions that you need to ask uh, to weed out those that I mean just purely pr a higher price tag you know uh, but but you know does it really deliver uh, that is a question that we need to ask and coming back to the color right um, yep. uh, it has two components like what Soling you mentioned uh, mm -hmm. is the resin component and also the pigment component and uh, if let's say you are unlucky and you don't know what question to ask then this is what you get right so the question that you should ask you know uh, are those that we just discussed earlier and this uh, aside aside from the color right the color performance sorry um, mm -hmm. is there any other more um, more serious questions to be asked you know for for mm -hmm. a product with different price tag because i know that you know you for yourself you want a peace of mind right uh, and and uh, color uh, addresses the emotional or rather the social part where the building looks nice you know uh people feel nice you know coming to a nice house but functionally right does mm -hmm. it uh, is there any other aspects of the product that we should consider yep so uh if you are looking, uh, looking forward to uh, the external cladding, most often uh, the another questions will be asked uh, by the public would be the corrosion resistant performance. For example, mm -hmm. like uh, how uh, good uh, these materials uh, can perform in terms of corrosion resistant performance comparing to another uh, type of the materials. This, I would say this will be quite a general or uh, quite typical question to be asked. I believe uh, yeah. the audience today's will also uh, come to their mind of this uh, uh, in terms of functionalities uh, aspect they were looking forward to the uh, the roof leakages and most often the roof leakages will be I think uh, due to what the, you're trying... uh, the corrosion uh, performance yeah I think what you're trying to say is not looking forward mm -hmm. to the roof leakages right yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, they, well, the, I think I think uh, uh, I, I, I do agree with you on this part um, on mm -hmm. roof leakages because I think uh, when it comes to roof leakage, right, people don't really care about corrosion, really. They care about whether the roof leak or not. And it is mm -hmm. only if, let's say, the roof starts corroding, like what you can see on this picture, mm -hmm. uh, to the point where, you know, the roof no longer can provide such shielding, then it starts leaking. Then it'll be mm -hmm. just too late. All right. Uh, later, we'll share some, re uh, some, some of our uh, insights and also some reasoning. But I think um, most often, you only feel the impact, right, uh, functionally when the roof starts leaking. But uh, if, let's say, the root cause is that it, it is corroded, then, you know, you have to ask the questions early on, you know, why didn't you choose the one that can last long, right? Perhaps it, it was just a bit slightly more expensive, right? So you need to ask the questions and also before you choose the, the, the lower price tag mm -hmm. one, which all of us, right, I'm I'm sure I do the same, right? I choose, uh, you know, cheaper price product. You know, if let's say there's no good justification, but I need to ask the right questions before I make that decision, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, so Link, the I I believe quite uh, the next question that uh, our audience would want to know is, what is the root cause of corrosion then? Since corrosion leads to uh, roof leakage. Yeah, I would say uh. The corrosion resistant performance is uh, highly depending on type of the coating or mm -hmm. type of the gaudy coating that you put it on top of the steel surface because mm -hmm. it will affect the uh, corrosion resistant performance. So generally, there are two types of the gaudy uh, coatings uh, that is uh, available in Malaysia market. There are type AZ and also the type Z. 
So mm -hmm. the main differentiation uh, between these two type of the galvanic coating for heater, uh, the, uh, the component itself for type A is actually a mixture of aluminum and zinc. And then for the type Z is uh, approximately 100% uh, of a zinc coating on the, uh, the galvanic coating itself. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so uh, how do we define, the uh, yeah. uh, define the, the performance in terms of corrosion resistant performance? Uh, I believe the audience here, uh, you might not, not really uh, uh, know how exactly it works. So let me teach you a very uh, straightforward way. Try to uh, ask your uh, suppliers to uh, give you uh, or to show you the proven record. The pro record that I mean is actually uh, the uh, actual weathering uh, uh, application test. Like what you can see here, it's actually the exposure test whereby yeah. uh, they are exposing uh, different types of the materials uh, uh, for the marine uh, environment, for example. And then mm -hmm. they can show you the pro record, the actual performance on leaks, rather than those um, accelerated uh, corrosion tests, which normally we conducted uh, using the lab test. I would say uh, those accelerated corrosion tests um, it is uh, conducted under the uh, control or conditions. It cannot mm -hmm. really represent uh, the actual uh, environments. So well, I, I think say, there's a danger. Yeah, there's yeah. a danger in using lab tests, also called your accelerated weathering test, to represent how it performs in uh, actual weather. Mm. Yeah, and uh, of course, um, for for you know, uh, this kind of weathering test, just now showing you uh, rightly mentioned, it mm. should, uh, it should be prioritized, and uh, most often our people like to uh, mumble the word uh, salt spray test, right? Yeah. And I think salt spray test has a huge difference compared to you know outdoor weathering test. Of course, the advantage of salt spray test or so called weather accelerated weathering test is the word accelerated, meaning you use mm. less time to get the result. But a more important question to be asked is whether the result really represents uh, its realistic uh, uh, you know, usage, mm -hmm. its realistic function. So even based on the uh, source spray test standards, right, the, the standards that are developed to carry out the test itself, uh, it has put out a warning that it uh, says you cannot correlate this test to how it performs in actual weather. Is merely a, a, a test to induce corrosion without any form of reality to how it can perform in actual, uh, you know, uh, tropical weather, for example, mm. or even near the coastal region. So, um, and we have seen a lot of these examples, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, done uh, that that compares those and then uh, say that it is not relevant, right? So, um, of course, to, to um, elaborate how, how uh, the, the, the impact would be is coming back to this uh, mm -hmm. photo that we showed earlier. So just like I mentioned, it is, um, you know, faded, right? I mean, that is the emotional, so-called the, the social part of it. You know, people look like your roof mm -hmm. doesn't look nice, right? Your building doesn't look nice because it's faded. But we actually went back after 15 years, right, for the same... Uh, building and this is what happened and uh what you can see here is that you know uh now the center part of it is uh, just totally corroded right i mean some of it they just mm. replaced and some of it is just left to corrode and have the roof leaking right and uh in fact i actually met uh one of the architect who is actually refurbishing who was refurbishing uh you know the, the corner lot here and uh the architect told me that uh, the replacement or the so-called refurbishment does not just happen on the roof uh, or the roofing material itself. It happens also on the components that is underneath, for example, the structure, uh, you know, the foil and or what have you, right? Um, mm -hmm. Simply because those components underneath are not meant to be in that situation, meaning, uh, you know, exposed to rainwater and all that. So, <coughs> you end up... <coughs> Excuse me. So you end up with a uh, very um, so-called costly uh, maintenance, right? That was not considered at the initial stage when you are buying the product. So 
uh, and this is uh, when you know uh, people are comparing between low price set and a high price set and then low price set okay what is the justification is it based on realistic tests like so then just now you mentioned right uh, it's not so it's based may, maybe it's based on source pay test and and you know uh, our this maybe you know better or you know, it's good for you but if you don't know better then now is the time to ask the right question you know whether you have realistic performance tests or would you have source pay test which is not so realistic right if you use that to to say that okay let me justify how why you should use this in your building right then uh it's just not working yeah it will it yep. will end up at, uh spending more yeah yep. compared to, and some more to, uh, for for the project they are sh you, that you're showing here is basically located in under the benign environment whereby uh, not, we shouldn't yeah, have uh, this area. kind of the performance uh in terms of mm -hmm. corrosion uh the red rusting corrosion to be happen Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so so uh to to our surprise also we found out that um uh, because the contract uh was written and and we actually traced back and it was required that the contractor you know offered a material that has the same uh the warranty of 25 years right uh without mm -hmm. any sort of rusting and and all that so uh it would be so bad you know because now it's only 15 years right that when you took this photo and uh you know the roof's completely rusted so so that is the impact right and and of, often uh a, that is another influencing uh factor you know for people to make decision same war uh, warranty mm. right so uh supplier again uh reputable uh, depending on how you define it right um mm. would have a test that justifies, you know, why this warranty is being offered. I mean, for building material, that's, that's uh, how it is. And of course, the justification has to be based on realistic tests. But then there are bad actors out there that, you know, offer warranty purely because, you know, supplier, competitor A offer the same thing. So why not, right? So uh, offering it without uh, basing it on the realistic test. So end up this happened. So, what can you do right so so this are uh, a realistic a really realistic problem that happens uh rampantly in our uh you know in our society and in our industry so yeah so so this is something that you, you need to take note of right um so so Ling, uh, let me share uh, ask ask you another question uh, perhaps uh, you mm -hmm. know you can share more so you mentioned this is in a benign meaning much more urban uh, environment how how about if the building is somewhere you know near a coastline because we are i mean peninsula and borneo side right it, the towns are mostly coastal right and, and there are coastal regions where uh, some of the industries are located in so what would be the difference uh, between coastal and also those benign areas yeah uh depending on the locations like the buildings that is not going to build near to the coastline and that it will be more crucial in terms of the material selections whereby uh, we need to look for the higher uh, coating class for example it's like uh, as a uh, 200 which is the highest uh, coating class for type as in the market mm -hmm. the reason being why we need to look for the higher coating class are uh, because uh, under this environment it will be uh, exposing towards the so-called corrosive substances like the salt particles and mm -hmm. normal typically i will be uh, experiencing some of the the metal components uh, corrosions uh, that, or they are showing the red lasting corrosion near the coastline like what you can see over here is basically it's a shasha door if mm -hmm. you are choosing not the right materials and then it tends to give you this kind of the result after one yeah. or two years yeah. or even three years so yeah. i would say in terms of material selection <coughs> it will be very crucial depending on the location itself. Yeah. As I understand it, uh, you actually did a, a recently, you know, I mean, not recently, mm. uh, be before the pandemic, you did a, a, a oh, study re -re on, on this, yeah. On, yeah, mm. visit on this project. So uh, perhaps you can share with our audience what, what you saw and what you mm. learned from this uh, visit. Sure. This uh, building is actually the retail uh, buildings. This is located very close to the uh to the coastline. Uh, a shop it's block. Uh, approximately, yeah, it's a retail store, basically. 
uh, it is located approximately 20 meters away only from the coastline. And then uh, when we uh, went back to do the visit, it's actually approximately uh, 10 years, which is last mm -hmm. year uh, before the pandemic uh, come. So uh, from my observation during the visit uh, was, uh, or the key takeaway I would say, like, the material uh, selections would be very crucial for this kind of the environments, whereby uh, for this image itself, you tend to see some of the metal components like the hand drills, the shutter drills, that what you can see over here, it start to show the uh, the sign of the corrosion after 10 minutes mm -hmm. under this uh, environment. Yeah. But however, the roofing material itself is still performance as its original. We mm -hmm. do not really see a very significant kind of the, uh, the color difference as well as a performance difference compared to its originals. Mm -hmm. and uh, this is one of the photos that I, that I would like to, uh, to share with all with the audience today as well, because this mm -hmm. is very close to the coast, uh, to the coastline whereby the seawater mm -hmm. able to, uh, 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 to push up and then to erode the concrete, and then mm -hmm. the BRC for the flooring is start to expose, and it also showing the sign of the red rusting uh, corrosion afterwards. Mm -hmm. I, I think, think I have so another. Uh, uh, Buildings to, yeah. to share. To your mic is rubbing your shirt. Okay. Your mic is rubbing okay. your shirt. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, uh, you were saying the. Yep. the, the this is yeah, the another, is another uh, retail yeah. store. Yeah. So I would say yeah. it's a similar uh, observations or yeah. similar uh, learnings from this uh, visit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so importantly, uh, uh, have to look for the, uh, have to consult with the reputable uh, supplier. Or mm. in terms of material selections. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, so from here, what you can see, uh, is that, you know, before when it's just completed and after, you know, uh, ten years, uh, in a coastal region. So, this is a proven record, right? This is something you can mm. ask for, uh, from the supplier, right? So, of course, uh. If let's say your building, you know, is much more prominent and different types of products, then you can also ask for, you know, whether that product itself has been used successfully in that environment. So one of the examples also, uh, another example uh, uh, is this building in uh, Langkawi. So uh, it was completed, it was an extension of the existing building uh, back in 2005. And it was completed. Uh, I mean, uh, the, another photo was taken in 2020, right? And uh, what you can see from here is that, you know, there was no changes to how it performs and, and whatnot. So another photo, right? And all these are what we call proven records, you know, case studies uh, that are supposed to happen and supposed to, to be used uh, compared to those lab tests, the light like source tests. Again, not reliable. Right, so so um, I think uh, when it comes to price tag uh, and also uh, decision making, right, on which product to buy, uh, higher price tag, yes, uh, it will it will make sense. But you need to ask these questions, right, and also don't be swayed by you know those uh, paper things like you know on the paper thing like warranty, right, because in the end. Uh, we have bad actors out there and, and you might be making a, bit, a big decision based on that paper, that number itself. It's not realistic, All right? So uh, to to uh, come to an end, of course, there's a, you know some, some nice photos. And this is also another uh, studies that we have uh, recently done. And uh, so Ling, I'm, I'm sure you have stayed in uh, this yeah. uh, chalet before. And what, what was your view? And, and what was the observation of this and to have an overall view? So this building itself was, uh, you know, installed, uh, you know, five years uh, after, I mean, the photo was taken five years after the building was completed. So what was your thought or observation when you were seeing that? First of all, uh, I would say I was really, really inspiring on this uh, building design because the built the chalet mm -hmm. just above the sea levels. And mm -hmm. after five years, when I went back to have a stay uh, over there, and I would say, mm -hmm. it's, again, it's really inspiring me uh, for another, another round, because mm -hmm. I would say, I do not, um, 
I would say the material is, uh, is still performed as its original. I can't really uh, see there's a very significant difference by comparing the original photos, which is taken in the year 2014, versus mm -hmm. the photo taken in uh, last year, basically. Yeah. So yeah. I do believe that the building owner or the business owner, they might mm -hmm. take a very good uh, study and on the uh, does really uh, consult the material supplier in terms of material selection. Mm -hmm. And the business owner did the right choice to choose the right materials for this kind of the environments. I would say this environment is even crucial compared to the previous uh, yeah. uh, the previous uh, projects that we showed just now. Yeah, I, I'm sure uh, the, the developer or so-called the owner of this uh, operation uh, uh, actually did consult us and, and also uh, extensively have a discussion. And mm -hmm. that's what we are aiming for, right, for our audience, right, to have a, a productive discussion on, on what you need to achieve. And of course, uh, we have architects to, you know, uh, serve as a platform to do that. So to conclude today's um, uh, discussion, uh, so then I would like to uh, bring out a quote from uh, the great Benjamin Franklin. Right, the bitterness of poor quality remains long after the sweetness of low price is uh, forgotten. So, uh, what this represents is that you know when you are looking at the price tag, or so called warranty, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Right, mm -hmm. those are things that are easily influencing your decision making. Uh, so, but what you need to do is drill down. You know, go underneath, dive in. Right, to look at the what. Uh, the other part of the iceberg is right so those questions are you know things that do not involve in the initial price tag, like labor costs you know cost of repairment and opportunity cost uh where you know just now we elaborated for a cladding material if let's say you know the color you, you prioritize on the color make sure you ask the right questions uh as the examples that we have shown earlier and if let's say you prioritize on the functionality part of the cladding ask those questions you know not source free test of course right uh not warranty of course right not just warranty right so ask the important questions whether they have those case studies mm -hmm. right yeah. so um of course the end result of all this is that you know you should not just look at the initial price tag and to conclude it in a much more shorter way is you should prioritize on the cost, cost of, ownership. of ownership because the cost mm -hmm. of ownership itself covers you know uh, how long the building lasts and, and do you really need maintenance? Do you really need repairment? And those kind of things, right? So, um, of course, with that, uh, I would like to uh, bring this session to an end. And of course, for uh, you know our audience today, uh, thanks for joining us. And if you feel satisfied and if you're happy with our sessions and our discussion and you learn something new, then uh, we encourage you to uh, fill up this survey form so it can mm -hmm. uh, help us uh, build our content in the future much better and of course uh, we have uh, you know the, the architects uh, going on uh, this year or virtually so feel free to visit our booth right and also our exhibition stand right uh, which we will have more interactions right if you have a project in hand uh, feel free to go there and we will uh, answer your questions right uh, with that mm -hmm. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.